Multiple sclerosis. The name may be familiar, but the cause and symptoms are perhaps more of a mystery. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, affects every aspect of life for those who have it. While the cause is still unknown, the symptoms occur as a result of nerve damage in the central nervous system. Multiple sclerosis is a disease that does not manifest itself the same way in everyone, and symptoms depend on many different factors. Susie Hartung, age 64, of Davenport, Iowa, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1976. Not much was known about this disease at the time, and there were no medications available. I began having symptoms that I wasn't understanding uh, in my early 20s, and um, I, it was really challenging because um, initially I was just told, well, no, there's nothing wrong with you, there can't be anything wrong with you, you're so young, and, and uh, you just must, uh, it must be all in your head. And that was really very frustrating. And MS people have heard that, especially MS people my age, let's say, went through a lot of that because not much was known in those days at all. So it was very challenging to deal with the skepticism of others. Multiple sclerosis falls under the category of an autoimmune disease. These diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes, are the result of the body's immune system attacking healthy cells by mistake. In MS, the target of this misguided attack is myelin, the protective sheath covering the nerves that run throughout our bodies. Myelin is composed of proteins and lipids, or fats, and serves as a natural insulator that helps electric signals carry quickly through the body's nerves. When the myelin is attacked by the immune cells, also called demyelination, it causes lesions. Lesions are places in which the myelin has been lost. Because the insulating and conductive elements of the myelin have been lost, the signal cannot travel as fast and may be very weak by the time it reaches its destination. This decrease in nerve signal causes the symptoms commonly associated with MS. Susie currently has 12 lesions on her brain, which have been discovered with MRIs. Because the location of lesions vary from patient to patient, symptoms also vary widely. Common symptoms include fatigue, muscle stiffness and spasms, problems with balance and coordination, bowel or bladder problems, vision problems, problems with attention, memory, problem solving, pain, depression, mood swings, and weakness. For Susie and many other MS patients, fatigue is one of the most difficult symptoms to deal with. This makes resting very important, but muscle nerve pain and progressive bladder weakness can make this a challenge. Swallowing, walking, staying balanced, sleeping, incontinence, and pain levels are also things that Susie deals with on a day-to-day -day basis. The basic symptoms uh, that I experience um, are fatigue, um, difficulty uh, with motor skills, um, hands, arms, um, legs, um, urinary incontinence, definitely neuropathy, uh, pain, nerve pain, often at the extremities. While the cause of MS is not known in detail, it is believed to be caused by cells of the body's own immune system attacking myelin. In the immune system, there are many different types of cells, one of these types is the dendritic cell, whose purpose is to ingest pieces of invading bacteria and viruses and then sound the alarm to the rest of the immune system. This cell is constantly ingesting molecules around it and putting pieces of what it has taken in, called antigens, on its surface. Other cells of the immune system see the antigen on the outside of the dendritic cell. They then alert other cells, signaling them to get rid of this particular invading pathogen. If one of these dendritic cells were to ingest a piece of myelin, it would put a piece of it on its surface and occasionally might alert other immune cells, thinking that the myelin was an invading bacteria or virus. It would then start an attack against the myelin, resulting in the demyelination of the nerves. Another area of study concerns the relationship between the levels of vitamin D and the incidence of MS. 
It has been found that the further away people are from the equator, the more likely they are to contract MS. Since sunlight is the main source of vitamin D for most people, the countries furthest from the equator have lower levels of this vitamin. These countries have also been found to have a higher incidence of multiple sclerosis, creating a link between the two. There is one exception, however, to this pattern. In a certain coastal region in northern Norway, the incidence of MS does not increase further from the equator. The diet of this community consists heavily of vitamin D-rich fish, which leads to higher levels of vitamin D in the systems of these people. This strengthens the theory of the correlation between vitamin D deficiency and an increasing likelihood of having MS. Susie explains that she is often asked what MS feels like. The main issues include balance, urinary incontinence, neuropathy, pain in the extremities, and nerve pain, often associated with pins and needles sensation. Susie says, Do you know how it feels to be mowing the lawn, then stopping, but still feeling like the lawnmower is running? That is often how I feel. Susie also has the underlying conditions of fibromyalgia, urinary incontinence, and essential tremor. These all make the MS harder to deal with, and if both the MS and fibromyalgia flare up at the same time, greatly increases the pain and disability levels. One of the challenges with fibromyalgia is that the, the pain can be so intense that it's extremely painful to be touched. And so uh, having illness can be kind of a marginalizing experience. We kind of put ourselves uh, on the periphery maybe of a social group rather than really entering in, uh, even among family sometimes, um, or sometimes people back themselves away, you know, because they don't know how to deal with people who are ill. Diagnosing multiple sclerosis can often take quite a while. Not only are the symptoms of MS common to many other diseases, but there's also a lack of knowledge about this disease in general. There are some things, however, that can be done to test for multiple sclerosis. MRIs are used to look inside the brain and spinal cord for the presence of the lesions that indicate MS. Spinal taps can also be performed to check for antibodies specific to MS in the spinal fluid. Because there is no cure yet for multiple sclerosis, there are limited options for treatment. While physical therapy can slow the loss of physical abilities, it is often not enough, especially for those whose multiple sclerosis is already fairly far along. DMDs, or disease-modifying drugs, are types of interferon that slow the demyelination process. In general, the majority of drugs currently being tested for use in patients with MS are specific immune system modulating drugs. These affect certain immune cells that have been shown to play a role in the disease process, thereby decreasing the symptoms of MS. Susie's treatment consists of prayer, exercise, a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and proteins, and low in refined carbohydrates, and injections of Rebif, a type of interferon that is injected every 56 hours. There are side effects of the Rebif, which, despite being in the normal range of reactions, often makes it harder for patients. Due to the intense fatigue that can occur, rest is also a very important part of managing multiple sclerosis. Susie finds the greatest relief, however, with her chiropractor. For the last several years, I have been uh, prescribed and have been taking uh, injections of interferon. Um, my particular uh, medication is Rebif. That uh, is designed to um, help prevent um, further deterioration, uh, further decline uh, in terms of the MS. I have found this to be a tremendous gift. I would not sign up for it. I would not volunteer for it, but a tremendous gift. While multiple sclerosis is a disease still wrapped in mystery, much is being done to unravel this puzzle. Many have high hopes that, through the work of scientists and the positive attitude of patients like Susie, a cure will soon be found.